As I rode home from work that night, I wondered where the killer was and if my theory about him was true. Partly true, or, as Vincenzo would have it, factless, hopeless, and useless. I wondered when and how he'd get his fifth victim, since the entire area was being guarded so closely now. I didn't have to wonder long. April 13th, 125 a.m. The dressing room in Omar's tent. Charisma Beauty was plain old Gladys Weems again. Dead, strangled with a broken neck, blood syringe from the base of her skull. Wilma Crankheimer was still in shock. So was Louise Harper. She had found the body after her performance. And I wasn't doing so well myself. Captain, I've got to talk to you about something. Hey, wait a minute. Come on. This is very important. Captain. I'm sorry. Captain Schubert is very busy. Yeah, well, i got to see him. I said you cannot go I'm in going there. there, sweetheart. Oh, What's going man. on here? I told him you were busy, sir. I've been trying to see you since 1.30 this morning, and I'm not going to leave until I do. It's all right, Sheila. I'm sorry, sir. It's all right, Sheila. you got to put police women on the waterfront streets at night. Do I, Mr. Yeah, Patrick? you do. you got five days in which to catch the killer. Otherwise, he's going to disappear. Oh, is he, Mr. Colson? Yeah, he is. He is. Every 21 years, since 1889, he has killed six women in 18 days precisely. Precisely, Mr. Colson? Precisely. Precisely. Well, no doubt we lack your eagle-eyed perception, but somehow we fail to see the exact precise pattern you keep babbling about. Now, in 1889, there was no evidence that the murders were committed over an 18-day period, or, for that matter, that they were even related. You yeah, check? Yes, we do a little research, too, sometimes. Now, to continue, in 1910, there was blood loss reported in only three of the victims. Yeah, what about the description the of the... description of the murder was made by a mental defective in his cups and... What about the 1952 descriptions? Were those made by a mental defective in his cups? He was a bank president! In 1952, there were eight murders committed during an 18-day period. Now, what does that do to your theory? Two of them by stabbing, which invalidates... And after the sixth strangulation, an eyewitness described the murderer as being, quote... Rather handsome, unquote. Oh, uh, you mean you missed that? Well, I... Uh, well, the witness obviously made a mistake. I mean, he had to. Well, did he, huh? Yeah. Tell me something, then. If it's the same killer, why no signs of rotted flesh on the throat of last night's victim? Um, and one last question. Why am I wasting my time on you? Facts obviously mean nothing to you at all. There is one last fact, Captain. Mm -hmm. By next Tuesday, that killer's gonna disappear for 21 years. And the way your police have got the Pioneer Square area bottled up, he isn't even gonna show his face. Which face is that, huh? The rotted one of your so-called super killer your newspaper saw fit to print? So-called? So I saw that so-called super killer wipe up the streets with your so-called police force. I had pictures to prove it that you wouldn't let me print. Tell me something, Kolchak. How long have you been in Seattle? What the does that mean? What have I got to do? How long have you been with the Chronicle? Oh, a little less than two weeks. A little less than two weeks, yeah, huh? Well, and in that brief time, you have ascertained exactly how we should conduct this case. Well, I've been a reporter for 22 years. And I've been a police officer for 30. Well, then why don't you retire? Listen, I don't like you, Mr. Kolchak. You might say I dislike you monumentally. Now, you have barged around this building as though it were your own private club. You've interfered with police officers while they were trying to perform their duty. You've strewn the streets of Seattle with a journalistic garbage. You've stepped on toes, muscled in, pushed, usurped, and generally conducted yourself with all the aplomb of a one-man Gestapo. Gestapo! Yes, Gestapo! Now listen, if I see or hear from you again for quite some time, I promise you I'll personally have you thrown in jail and get your arm off my clock! I'm telling you, you've only got five days left. And I'm telling you to get out and stay out! Cease, mister. Cease, desist, and vanish, or else. At least.
Please search the underground. The killer's down there. That's where he isn't. That... The underground was searched. Nothing at all was found. Sheila! Yes, we did that without consulting you. I hope that's all right, Mr. Kolchak. Sheila, show Mr. Kolchak the door. Good day, sir. Coming, Mother. I warned you about bugging the police department, didn't I? Yeah, didn't so, I? So what? So, 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 Schubert's office just called Gros Biner. Gros Biner called me. And once again, thanks to you, I'm frying on a griddle. Why? Why? Are you for real? You barge into Schubert's office, you tell him how to run his case, you tell me he's suppressing the news, and you ask why? He is suppressing the news. He doesn't know how to run the case. The killer is down there, Tony. He is down there well, what in they the get underground. Him out of there? Because he is hidden away someplace that nobody knows. Then how the heck can they get out of there? By breaking open the walls. I don't know. Listen, Crossbinder's got some influence in town, hasn't he? What about it? You have got to talk him in to pressuring the police, forcing them to do what I want him to do. <laughs> you know what you just said? Well, of course I know what I just said. I just said it, didn't I? No, you don't know. It's finally happened, Kolchak. You've got schizoid. No. You'll be wearing robes in the crown No, next. no, no. I'll tell you what's finally happened, Tony. You have lost your guts. You have sold out. Sold out? Sold out! Why, you miserable, egocentric... You are off the story. I am what? You heard me. You are off the story. You know something, Tony? You're getting old. You're getting very old. Out! 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 Get out! <laughs> Just one small item, Mr. Kolchak. Mark Twain. Fifth paragraph down. Fifth paragraph down, two, three. Oh, yeah. Mr. Twain noted with typical dryness of tone that he had a most intriguing conversation with, with, uh, with a local physician who claimed that physical immortality... Oh, this is very good, Mr. Barry, very good. And physical mortality was not only possible, but probable, indeed practical. Mr. Twain remarked, yes, the physician's name is Dr. Richard Malcolm. You wouldn't have anything on this Richard Malcolm, would you? Just one small item. Dr. Richard Malcolm was a member of the original staff of the Westside Mercy Hospital when it opened in 1882. There's the original story and photograph. The Civil War? He was a surgeon in the Union Army. <laughs> Is this hospital still standing? Oh, I don't believe so, Mr. Kolchak. Uh, I, uh, I think there's a clinic there now. I took a fast trip to the clinic, hoping they might have the record files from Westside Mercy Hospital stashed away in their cellar somewhere. I asked Mr. Barry to keep checking his own records while I was gone and find out what else he could about Dr. Richard Malcolm. I never had to search the cellar for those records. I found my answer just inside the lobby door. All right, then. All right, then. Call the police. Tell them we have a vandal here. Tell them to get here right away. Now, you get down from there this instant, sir. Malcolm Richards, M.D., the doctor's saint of the waterfront, founder of the Richards Free Clinic, also known as Richard Malcolm, M.D., late of the Union Army, our killer from time. This is dreadful, Mr. Kolchak. On the contrary, Mr. Barry. There he is, officer.